Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Um, I know it's been a while since I have put up any videos and it's just gonna have to be that way for a little while. Um, obviously like things are a, a little bit weird right now in the world and I know it's not like my usual, usual schedule but um, I'm, I apologize for that and I'll try and do better but if not, it's just gonna be, it's just gonna have to be okay with it, everybody. Um, but I thought for today's video, it'd be fun. Um, just like for a little bit of a change to do something a little different. And today I'm going to talk about my thoughts after binge watching uh, the entire first season of Love is Blind on Netflix. So if you haven't already seen that show and you are like halfway through, or if you're interested in watching it, um, then I would click off the video now because there's definitely going to be spoilers in this video. Um, it's just going to be me talking about my thoughts about the whole thing. Um, so yeah, click away now if you haven't seen it. Otherwise, we're going to get right into talking about it. So I'm going to talk about it, <laughs> um, I guess, person by person or like couple by couple um, as much as possible to keep things a little bit organized. But um, basically, the whole show was crazy and like my initial thoughts just before I get into specific people and things like that is and, and I know other people have had this same criticism but I 100% agree with it which is that the show was supposed to be the idea that you're supposed to meet somebody and you know develop a connection with them without having seen them um, so that you can't be influenced by their physical appearance I guess and in order to make a show like that like make any sense at all um you should probably have a variety of different people of different appearances um like you know some people that are on the thinner end some people that are on the heavier end some people that are prettier some people are, that are less conventionally attractive like things like taller shorter you know all those kind of like different physical things um just to like make it interesting because the whole premise of the show is that you don't see the person until after you've already like i guess fallen in love with them um so the right off the bat i was a little bit disappointed just because every single person that they got on the show except for like one or two people that were basically extras anyway because they had pretty much no airtime um they were all like insanely beautiful people like gorgeous like nines and ten out of tens like it was not a very wide variety of different levels of attractiveness, um, which kind of defeated the purpose of the entire show, in my opinion. Um, but there was still quite a bit of drama and stuff, so I continued watching anyway, because once you watch the first episode, they like suck you into like basically binge watching the whole thing, which is what happened to me. But I just wanted to state that right off the bat, that that was kind of, I don't know. It was like a missed opportunity in my opinion because there could have been so much more like drama I guess and like TV entertainment if they had mixed it up a little bit with how people looked. Having said that, let's go into the people. So basically the show focused on six couples that had gotten engaged through the process of like not seeing each other and then they took those couples and let them see each other and then had them sort of go on like a little honeymoon type experience and then they moved in with each other for a couple of weeks and met each other's families and like all that and it was basically to see if the relationship could survive once they were like face to face and like living with each other and like integrating into each other's lives essentially and okay i'll start with the first couple because they were only on the show briefly because they ended up breaking up which was um what were their names diamond and uh carlton so the big blow up i guess between them was that carlton was bisexual and he didn't tell diamond that before they got engaged and then it came out and <sighs> here's my thoughts about that whole situation is i feel like that could have been like just having watched it and seeing both perspectives like i understood how both of them were acting and why both of them were acting the way they were i understood why carlton was getting very defensive because obviously he had his backup because he was expecting, you know, the worst. And I understood why Diamond was reacting to that defensiveness by getting a little bit defensive herself. And it just like they played off each other in the worst way possible and ultimately led to like some big explosive fight and stuff. And it made me honestly kind of sad because I feel like she, Diamond, was like actually coming around to like maybe accepting him for that 
but that's a lot for her to process and I really did feel like she was like in the early early stages of like learning to accept it um it just came as a shocker and she wanted to talk it out with him and stuff and he just thought that the fact that she didn't immediately accept it and was okay with it like right off right day like the minute after he told her he thought she was you know backing out of the whole thing and she wasn't I feel like she just was taking some time to like process everything and she slowly I'm not sure if she could have gotten there like we don't know maybe she maybe she was trying to accept it but maybe ultimately she wouldn't have been able to like I don't know where her feelings were at with that but it honestly kind of seemed like she was leaning more towards like at least giving it a shot and seeing if maybe she could get past it and stuff and he just I don't think he realized that. I don't think Carlton realized like where she was at with it. And he just immediately thought she was judging him and it just turned into a big blowout fight where they obviously broke up. So that was kind of my feelings about that couple. Like it, I felt like it still had some potential. I mean, maybe we would have learned things later on that would have been like even more of a deal breaker, but I don't know. They kind of like had a big blow up fight before you really had the chance to see if she was gonna make it work. Um, but anyway, moving on from them, because they were kind of off the show really early on. And the other five couples made it all the way to the altar before they decided yes or no if they're going to get married or not. So we'll talk about the next couple. So <laughs> Kenny and Kelly um, was one of the couples. And literally, I binge watched this show with my husband, and we both just were like, how are these two so boring? Like, there was actually nothing wrong with either of them. Like there was nothing that was like, oh my God, this person, like I can't handle how annoying they are or I can't handle this or whatever. Like they were fine, but like they just were the definition of like plain. Like they looked very plain. Like they were both pretty. Like I said, everyone on the show was like really attractive. Like they were both attractive, but like in the most bland way possible. Like they weren't interesting looking. They weren't like drop dead gorgeous. Like you stop and stare and your jaw hits the floor kind of gorgeous. They were just like above average, but like very conventional, very typical, like good looking, but not blow me away good looking. Like they were just, so their looks were kind of boring. And then their personalities were boring. Like they both just had the most mundane lives. They both came from very, I guess, conventional families, like, both parents still married, both sets of parents still married and like nuclear family type upbringing. They didn't have any family drama, it seemed like. They didn't have any personal drama, it seemed like. Like they were just blah. And like, as much as that's fine in real life, like for the purposes of television and entertainment, it was like kind of boring. Like every time they would go back to that couple, like my husband and I would be like, oh, time to check in with the borings. Like they were just so boring <laughs> even the dress that she picked out um the wedding dress that kelly picked out at the end i was like oh perfect a boring dress for a boring person like there was just nothing going on so like i don't know and um in the end as we know kelly ended up saying no because she i guess it seemed like in the end she wasn't really attracted to him and like all i have to say to that is like what do you want like you're 33 you're single, you're on a show meant for people to find love without seeing them. So you would think somebody that was really shallow wouldn't uh, sign up for that kind of an experience. And yet here she is and her guy was like totally fine looking. Like he was, I would consider him like above average attractiveness. So like, I'm not sure what, what the problem was there, but you know, whatever. It was at least not super controversial. I mean, she said she ended up saying no, obviously at the altar and even at the altar, like Kenny was like super supportive of it. And he was like, oh, okay. Like he didn't like have a freak out at her or like anything like that. So it was like, even the way he took it was kind of boring, but yeah. So that was, I wanted to get them out of the way. Cause I have not really a ton of thoughts on them. Um, next I'll talk about G what was her name? Gianina and Damien. Um, so, okay. Gianina is so adorable. I thought she was so cute. I, I've talked to some of my friends and they were like, oh, she was so like annoying and horrible and stuff. And I was like, really? I kind of like liked her a lot. Like I thought she was so cute. Her smile was like gorgeous. She had the cutest little like chubby cheeks when she smiled. And I don't know, she was just so adorable and cute. And I really liked her. Um, Damien was a little bit weird, but I think he meant well. He just had some like 
weird quirks, I guess. And I don't know, the biggest drama with them, I guess, was they were really bad at fighting. Like, not that fighting is ever a good thing, but like, you have to be kind of good at fighting if you're going to be married. Like, fighting in a respectful way, like disagreeing rather than full out fighting. Um, like having an argument rather than having a full on blowout fight. And I feel like those two really weren't good at that. Um, they would fight pretty intensely. Um, Gigi uh, would be very insensitive when they got in fights. She would call him names. Like I think at one point she was like yelling at him that he was like an mf -er and stuff like that. And like just she got very she really turned up the bitch mode when they got in fights, which I think wasn't super appropriate. And he would just kind of shut down at that point. Um, so I, I don't know. I still thought, I, I don't know. They were very back and forth. Like I thought they were like not working out. And then all of a sudden it looked like they were working out. And so by the time they got to their wedding, I was pretty sure they were going to go through with it. And my husband was like, nah, like he's going to say no. And I'm like, no way. Like he's not going to say no. Well, he ended up saying no. And even that was dramatic because she obviously freaked out about it, like on stage in front of her entire family and friends, uh, which was funny. But yeah, it turns out um, if you guys have watched the whole show and you've seen the reunion show that they're actually back together. They're still dating, but like they're not married or like engaged or anything like that. But yeah, I don't know. Like they were interesting. They were definitely interesting, but well, I'm saving obviously the best for last. Um, so there's three more couples to talk about and I'm going to talk about the most interesting ones at the end, but, uh, we'll talk about Cameron and Lauren next. So they were like the only, I think the only biracial couple that was on the show. I mean, I guess Gigi was like Hispanic, but I don't know. Like they were the only like black and white couple, I guess. And they really played this up in the show when I feel like I'm not sure if that was like super accurate that it was like that important of an issue to the two of them because it seemed like they didn't really take it as like a big deal but the show kept wanting to like bring that up like as if that was such a deal breaker and stuff um so that was I feel like more so it was just creative editing on the part of the you know the show um to create drama and tension and stuff and they even really played up like the meeting of the parents when um Cameron uh, met Lauren's um, parents and they were like interrogating him about being white and stuff like that. Like it wasn't as dramatic as they sort of made it seem, um, which was interesting. But yeah, I love them as a couple. I think they're so cute together. She's absolutely beautiful and he's like so sweet and like he's very, very calm and quiet and collected. And he like they pretty much never had a blowout fight the entire time, which was really sweet. And then in the end, they ended up getting married and in the reunion show, they said they're still together and stuff. So that was kind of like not a huge surprise for anyone, I don't think, because they were the first couple that got engaged in the pods. And then they ended up having the most um, seamless relationship, I guess you could say, on um, the most, um, the least, the least um, fighting and any of that kind of stuff. So it was kind of a no brainer when they both said yes. But at the very end, like Lauren was starting to have like cold feet a little bit, but she still ended up saying yes, which was good. Um, all right, let's talk about the interesting ones, um, which would be Barnett and Amber was, was one couple and then Jessica and Mark. So Barnett and Amber, I feel like once they got together, like there was obviously, and I'm gonna talk about the drama that happened at the beginning, but like once they actually decided on each other, I feel like they were actually a pretty good match. Um, having said that, I find them both um, kind of insufferable. Uh, I could never be friends with a girl like Amber. She's just way too abrasive. She's very like in your face, like I'm gonna kick your ass, kind of like a weird kind of personality like that. She's very, very loud, very center of attention. Like I want to be heard, this and that, and then whatever. I want to be noticed and very from from the get-go like even from episode one she was very very cocky like she knows she's hot and she knows she's all that and everything and i just found that really off-putting um and then barnett who like you know which i'm going to talk about in a second but he had he was a bit of like a player he seemed to be very uh guarded he seemed like he was not looking for a commitment he was just looking to like you know, play around with girls and stuff. And 
he never really seemed to open up about anything personal the entire time like i could not tell you one single personal thing about him um even when he and amber decided on each other and they were like engaged and it was like just the two of them exclusively like it still seemed like they didn't have a meaningful conversation like at, at, at all in the whole show every time they showed those two they were just talking they were just insinuating that they were sleeping together or they were like halfway in the process of getting ready to sleep together or they were talking about times they slept together like or about how like attractive the other person is like there was no like substantial conversations there except for right near the very end when they sort of started talking about finances um but aside from that it was just like yeah we're both super attracted to each other yeah we have a lot of sex like that was pretty much it so it felt really really shallow to me but at least they were both on the same page about being equally shallow i guess so it kind of like felt like it worked um and in the end they were another couple that actually ended up getting married and apparently they're still married till this day not sure if that one's gonna work out because i just feel like again unless they're creatively editing the show it just seemed like they really really connected physically obviously there was a lot of chemistry and stuff but like it didn't seem like it really went below the surface for them um and then when they did talk about finances which was like the only deeper topic they ever got into pretty much it was like a disagreement like she um amber didn't really work didn't have any intention of working wanted to be a stay-at-home wife and mom and stuff and didn't like have any intentions of ever bringing home any money and i think barnett obviously didn't really take well to that news um he didn't really like that idea so yeah the only somewhat meaningful conversation they had was like sort of a negative so i don't know that that couple was a little bit weird to me like they just seemed like way too into each other for all the wrong reasons but also they seemed like kind of shitty people so maybe two shitties like work together <laughs> but um okay let's talk about the one the one everybody talks about with the show because it was like the most insane drama jessica and mark so mark no complaints i mean he was okay that's a lie there was one thing about mark that like kind of annoyed the shit out of me which was that he kept going back like he kept allowing jessica to just walk all over him like he had no backbone like no backbone whatsoever why would you want to be somebody's second choice but basically um and i'm, I'm basically having this conversation with you guys as if to assume you've already watched the show because i don't want to go into exactly what happened like a recap of the show because if you're watching this far into the video I'm, I'm assuming you've already seen the show so you know exactly what happened but essentially she was trying to decide between barnett and mark and then when she chose barnett he ended up not choosing her back and then she went crawling back to mark as like second choice and from then on it was just like a disaster in the making um she the whole entire show like almost every single episode she got shit faced drunk like embarrassingly so she would go and like flirt with barnett meanwhile mark's right there and amber's right there like both of their respective partners and she just had no shame about it like she and then she would constantly complain like oh i'm 10 years older than mark like how is that gonna work and then she would be the one acting the most immature i've seen on the entire show and it's like dude you're the one who is blackout drunk right now um like crying in bed while mark who's 10 years younger than you is like taking care of you like so if anyone should be concerned about age gaps like it shouldn't be you because you act like the youngest out of everybody there even though you're 34 years old like it was really pathetic the drinking was just oh my god cringy cringy to watch um the constantly talking about like at one point she got super drunk and then like said to mark oh i think barnett's so hot and stuff why why would you ever say that to somebody like that you're supposed to be engaged to like that's just so hurtful and uncalled for and like also irrelevant like even if she felt that way what's he supposed to do with that information like good for you like it was just so such a weird thing to do such a weird thing to say she just strung mark along the whole time saying like in private interviews to the camera that she just wasn't attracted to him basically is what she was saying and it's like he wasn't even bad looking so it's like dude like you're 34 you should probably just take what you can get at this point like i hate to say it but like obviously you're somewhat desperate if you're going on this kind of a show anyway like to find love or whatever like it's obviously not working for you in your like regular dating life so you're like low-key a little bit desperate you're like talking about how you want to like settle down and shit and then like a perfectly good guy who's 
like very attractive and like yeah he's younger than you but he acts older than you like he's more mature than you are like comes along wants to be your husband and all this shit and all you can do is complain about him and treat him like garbage and turn around and say he's not hot enough and like the whole thing and oh my god it was just it was hilarious to watch like honestly hilarious to watch her it was like a train wreck like it was like a car crash in slow motion that you just could not look away from it was so funny so yeah obviously in the end they did not end up getting married she said no he said yes not sure why he would have said yes but the whole time he was like ride or die for her which was shocking because of how badly she was acting the entire time but even at the very end she was like i'm not even sorry and stuff it was just like so brutal like she's just like a horrible person like just a horrible person and i was really hoping in the reunion show that like she would she did kind of apologize a little bit but like like I was really hoping she would at least address the fact that she was like so sloppy drunk the whole time and like maybe say she was in rehab or like you know not drinking anymore but she didn't say that at all so I assume she's fully partying it up like as hard as she was on the show still and she although she apologized to like Amber and Barnett because she was obviously hitting on Barnett while he was engaged to Amber um she didn't even at the reunion show apologize to Mark like she never once apologized to Mark and he's the one who deserved the apology the most from her. Like it was just absolutely insane what kind of crap she pulled with him. And yeah, so um, those are my thoughts on that whole thing. It was crazy good, good trash TV to watch when you're, you know, quarantined or whatever. Um, so if you haven't watched it, well, I just spoiled it all for you. But if you feel like watching it anyway, because it's enjoyable to see stupid people do stupid things, then go for it. Go for a watch. Um, I think it's only 10 episodes and then there's the reunion episode but those are my thoughts um comment below like who was your favorite of the girls and who was your favorite of the guys and also who was your least favorite of the girls and of the guys i mean i think everybody's least favorite girl was jessica um but maybe i'm wrong like i i can't see how anybody would say anybody other than jessica for like worst girl like she was the absolute worst um but yeah i'm just curious to know what you guys thought of all the characters about the couples and like the whole thing were you surprised by the ones that ended up getting married were you surprised by the ones that didn't end up getting married like i don't know just comment your thoughts below because i love talking about this show with everybody who's seen it and it's like so addicting to talk about and just like make fun of how crazy it was but anyway um so that's all for now hopefully i'll have another video soon uh, like i said i'm kind of not sticking to my schedule right now just because of the situation going on but um eventually you know i will have another upload um at some point in the future so stay tuned for that and i will catch you guys in the next video all right bye guys